up on Google, go look. Being flogged is not, not good. This is a man that's been put in chains. He's been try- This is someone who has been persecuted for his faith. And he's given the instruction to say, listen, you need to rejoice. You need to be thankful in all things and in all things with prayer and petition. Make your requests known to God. There's something about the way you present your needs. There's something about the way that you, your attitude and the way you prepare yourself for God to bless you. Because if we're constantly in the middle of a pity party, boy, it's just hard for God to, to really penetrate that. Amen? Does anybody in here like to be around negative people? Grumpy, whiny, complaining people? No? Some of you? Listen, God wants us to be in a season where we're rejoicing and excited. Listen, I, yesterday when I was watching my son play, I was so convicted about the way I've been living my life for God. Convi- not in a way, I'm not living in sin, and it's not, not that I feel like I'm not where I need to be, but just my attitude and my ability to actually enjoy where God has placed me. There are some times that I get so wrapped up in all the details that do not matter that I'm missing out on the blessing that I have and the joy it is to truly serve my God. The joy that it truly is to be a part of the kingdom of God. Amen. I heard my mom just a few years ago. My mom is one of these people that never sits down. She's always cleaning. She's, if there's company over, she's getting something for everybody and doing this. And then after dinner's prepared, she's cleaning up the kitchen, all this. Everybody else is playing and all this stuff and want to get everything just right and pick this up and all this stuff. She's done that my whole life. And a couple years ago, she finally just quit doing that. Not, not cleaning it, but she would wait until company was gone and then she would clean it. And she made this statement. She said, I, I wasted so many years thinking that really mattered, and it really doesn't matter. It can wait another hour, and then I can clean it up. But we can get so wrapped up. Now, listen, wait another hour. Don't, don't be waiting two days and a week and all that, all right? Listen, come on now. Help me, somebody. <laughs> I'll get it next week. No, no, no. 30 minutes, an hour, then let's clean that up, pig. So, there's, there's a part of that that it can wait. And we find here that Paul says, listen, in everything rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. Your gentleness, your kindness. Let your spirit, let who you are, let what God has put inside of you, let it be evident. All right? It needs to be obvious this morning that God's inside of you. It needs to be obvious this morning to the people around you by the way you talk and the way you treat people and the situations you're involved with and the conflict that you deal with. It needs to be evident today that God's living inside of you. Okay? It's more than just coming to church. People don't give a rip if you went to church if you're going to treat them like trash. Okay? I don't care that you've been faithful for six weeks if you're going to not treat somebody with kindness and gentleness and with the love of Christ. Basically treat them the way you would like to be treated and the way God has treated you and I, by forgiving us. Amen? That's why you do it. You say, why why do I have... You do it because he did it for you. Because I didn't deserve it and he did it for me. They don't deserve it, so you have to do it. All right? You may not like it, but that's the way it is. That's what helps you and I... Get to the point right here Paul's talking about. I can be content in all things in any. It doesn't matter whether I'm broke, whether I'm in need, or I have everything that I want. I can still be content. There are some people today that they think that more money is going to bring contentment. It's going to make everything right. And some of you know these people. They have now in their life, they have all the money they have, all the money they need. They can buy whatever they want, and yet they're not content. It's not enough. And then you have people that are broke and they don't have any money. Listen, there's a secret to that. And here's, we quote this all the time. Verse 7, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. 
you and I cannot make it without the peace of God. You and I need the peace of God, not just, I want you to catch this. We quote this all the time, the peace of God which transcends all understanding. Look at the last part of that, that will guard your heart and your mind. If you were here Wednesday night, we talked about a little bit about putting on the full armor of God. And about the importance of you and I before we pray, and before we seek God. If you go back in, in Ephesians and you see where he, he's, Paul's telling us to put on the full armor of God, he lists everything we need to put on. Then after that, then he says, now present your request to God. Now is a time to pray. It's, you and I have to prepare a lot of times ourselves to pray when, you know, honestly, we don't do that a lot of times. A lot of, the, a lot of times we pray out of desperation like we forgot, all right? It, it's like... Tyler, my middle son, every single day of school, when he gets in the car to leave and I tell him, Ty, did you get your backpack? It's that look of like it's the first time he's ever in his life had to take his backpack to school. And like I haven't told him every single day of every school year, get your backpack. They're, oh, it's the same way with us. We shouldn't be that way when we go to pray, when situations... Listen, you and I need to prepare our heart and mentally put on the full armor of God, not physically putting on the helmet and the breastplate, and get our feet, but mentally every day preparing ourselves, saying, God, I belong to you. I love you. I know that there's an, there's an attack out there, but I'm preparing myself right now through prayer. Prepare my mind. Prepare my heart. Guard me for what's going to take place so that when something comes up, we can pray out of preparation and not pray out of desperation. All right? That prayer out of desperation when the teacher says, pop quiz, oh! And that prayer goes, Lord, if there's any way for you to open up my head, pour in all the knowledge in this textbook, and allow me just take control of my hand and mark the right answer just this one time for this one test. And that's all. I'll never ask, Lord, I need you. That's desperation prayer. But I've done it a lot. A lot. It's that, listen, God wants us also to pray out of preparation. Listen, it, you and I have a responsibility as a follower of Christ. You, we don't just accept God and then he does all the work. Every promise and every blessing in the word of God is contingent on one thing. My obedience and your obedience. If you'll be obedient, if you'll be willing to do what it says, then God can bless you and then he can bless me. But there's something about being prepared when you pray. There's something about when something comes up, you're not searching for... That there's something really that helps you grow and mature in your walk with God when a situation comes up and the first thing you don't do is have to call somebody else to pray for you. That your first instinct is not, oh man, i got to find somebody that can pray. i got to call the pastor, i got to call the church, I need... There's something that helps you grow and mature that when you face a trial and you face opposition, that because you have prepared your life and your devotions and you've already spent some time alone with God that morning and you've already prepared your mind and everything, that as soon as something happens, you can just say, you know what, Lord, I need you right now. I don't know how this is going to work out. I didn't see this coming, but God, you're in control. I know that you're with me. I know that you're in my life. So you know what? God, take care of it. Instead of there being this, this all chaos breaking loose. And what am I going to do? What? And it turning into all this drama. There's something about being prepared when you pray. There's something about guarding. Like the scripture says, the peace of God will guard your heart and your mind. How many believe this morning that you need your heart guarded and you need your mind guarded? With the technology that we have and everything, I spent time this week talking with our student pastor because my son now has a phone that he can, he can put an app on and he can get on Instagram and he can do all that stuff. And so there's certain restrictions and certain things that, that were obvious. And so there's just, it's like, I don't know. I, that, that, 
probably going to have to stop. There's some things that I thought initially was going to be okay, but the way they've, they've, I don't know that I can do it. Oh, you're one of them parents. Yeah, probably so. I, I probably, and here's, here's why, and I'm not, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, for you to raise your family, you better be on your knees. For you to raise your family, whether you have kids or you don't have kids, whether they have an iPhone or an iPad or a tablet or not, doesn't matter if they're 6 or they're 17, you better be on your knees praying and asking God to guard your family. All right? Part of the purpose of putting on the armor is to, yeah, to use it so that it will be there when you need it. The peace of God brings, it guards your heart and it guards your mind. You and I, that's, that's on us. We've got to be able, listen, you can't, you can't walk into the bar, walk into the strip club and say, God, guard my mind. Protect me for what I'm going to see. Lord, I know that you're able. You can do it exceedingly abundantly above all. That's not what it means. You have to do your part. Don't laugh at me like that because you operate that way. Listen, don't pay the cable bill and have all the HB hole and the sin to the max and all that kind of stuff. Don't, don't have all that stuff pumping into your house. And the man praying, Lord, protect me from here. No, no, no. Cancel it. That's your job. You've got to, that's guarding your heart and your mind. That's guarding and putting up restrictions. That's denying yourself daily, picking up your cross and crucifying the flesh and saying, I'm not worthy. I can't do this on my own. God, I have to have you so that I can operate in a season in my life where I am content in what God has blessed me with and not what everybody else has blessed me with and not what can I attain from the world, but what can I get from the word. That's being content in all things. Listen, it's you and I having to guard ourselves, and the Holy Spirit's going to do his part. And God's going to send his peace that helps us guard our mind and our heart. But he's, listen, for that to happen, you've got to be around the things of God, and you've got to read the things of God, and you've got to hear the things of God, which means that what you listen to and what you read and where you're at, it's important. It's important that you're in the house of God. It's important that you're around people who believe the power of God, that have that same, you need to hear the word of God. God's word is true that it will not return void, which means regardless of the word that I preach this morning, it's going to find someone. Someone's going to be affected. You can walk out and say, I didn't get one thing from that. Man, Pastor, I don't, he missed it today. It's not any good. Oh, what he's doing. Maybe it'll be better next week. God wants to be involved in every single thing that we do. And you and I have to put a focus. and We have to be the ones to put, to use our brain, to use common sense, put those restrictions in place so that the peace of God can help us guard our mind in our heart because even when we're doing everything that we can do and we're really putting that effort we still miss it we still miss the mark and we still fail any parent in here ever felt like you just you just missed it like i why am i a parent why why do i even try how did i blow it this bad and we look at all the other parents and, man, I wish they had it together. And they're looking at you going, I wish I had it together like them. Listen, we, even when you're trying and God's in control, you still make mistakes. But that's where God makes up the difference. That's where God goes before you and protects you and gives you that nudge and gives you that second and third chance and brings it to your attention that, hey, hey, Justin, you might want, might want to pay attention to this. You might, might want to look at this. You might want to read that one more time. You might want to rethink that decision. Paul's saying, I've learned the secret to being content in all things. In any situation, whether I'm in need or I'm in want, or I have everything. It goes back to allowing the peace of God to guard your heart and mind. And you see here what he says. 
whatever is true, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, anything excellent or praiseworthy, what does it say? Think on these things. You can't think on the things of God if you're pumping your brain full of trash. If you're listening, listen, if you're not listening to the right music, you're not watching the right movies, you're not around company and around people and friends that talk about, listen, if, it's hard to think on good things. Listen, I, I don't use profanity. I don't cuss, all right? It's not because I forgot how. All right? It's not because I can't remember the words. I played enough football, my coach made up words. All right? I've been cussed out and cussed at. and all. I understand what it is. But I made my mind up a long time ago. I, did, I don't want to do that. I don't want that to come out of my mouth. But... If I'm around someone and people that all they do, it's just their language. And you watch movies that have it. Guess what happens? It starts to replace all the little phrases and all the things where I would say, oh, shoot. Something else can come out. It starts to creep in there. It's hard to think about the things of God and think about what sort of things are pure and lovely and admirable and trustworthy when you're around a bunch of filth. Listen, I understand we live in this world, but we're to be not of this world. There are restrictions that you have to put up, which means there are certain friendships and certain places that you cannot go because it takes away from you being what God wants you to be. I understand. Listen, we preached last week about Jesus being a friend to sinners and tax collectors, and more importantly, sinners and tax collectors wanting to be friends with Jesus and wanting to hang out with him. I understand that. I'm not saying you alienate everybody and say, well, I heard you cuss, so I can't talk to you. That's not what I'm talking You understand what I'm talking about today. There are certain things that you've got to restrict so that you can focus on the things of God so that you can truly see what God wants to do in your life so that you can live in a season of contentment where you're not constantly saying, I need this, I want this. How come God didn't bless me here? Oh, blah, blah, blah. Listen, I've been raised in church and I've seen people get upset because they're not shouting and they're not, they, they don't feel the goosebumps and they don't understand why God's not speaking to them and I don't know why I need my miracle and everybody else is just so excited and I don't want, and they get so upset because God's not blessing them and then somebody over here, they're just, whoa, they just feel it, you know. The, the First time anything, they, they're just always excited. And everything's just boom, 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 boom. And they're just thanking God for this miracle and this blessing. And boom, boom, boom. And this person over here, their family's lost. And, and their, their husband just said, I want a divorce. And they've got all this stuff. And they don't understand why God's not blessing them. And they're just back and forth in one extreme to the other. And God, why aren't you blessing me? How come you're blessing them? What am I doing wrong? What am I doing right? How to blah, 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 blah. It just goes crazy. And we find ourselves in a constant state of just over here and over here. And we try this, and we try that, and we do this, and we do that. I'll do whatever. Here, you need to quote this scripture three times and then write it down, put it on your pillow, and let it sink into your brain while you sleep. Okay, I'll try it. And you just do whatever. Anoint this and slap this and all kinds. I mean, it's just like, I'll do whatever. Why? Because we're not content with where we're at. We think we're doing something wrong. The contentment comes in your relationship with God and allowing the peace of God that transcends all understanding, which means that you can't explain it. You're not going to understand it. I don't care how hard you try. I don't care how many degrees you have. You cannot understand the things of God. You can't understand the peace of God. Because it brings peace in the middle of the biggest hell of your life and it doesn't make sense. And it also brings peace in the biggest victory of your life. It allows you to be content. It allows you to focus on the thing that truly matters and that's God and not you. It allows you to truly see that it's because of his blessing, it's because of his grace and his mercy that you're able to do what you're doing. And you're able to be content. And you're okay with that. So that you don't freak out 
When the doctor says it's cancer, when they call and say there's been a wreck, there's a hope. There's a hope that God has put inside of you, the peace of God that you don't understand. I've seen people walk through tragedy in their life, and I don't know how they even have, I don't know how they function. Because I think I would never be able to do that. If that happened to my family, I don't know that I could, I don't know that I'd want to serve God, that I'd want to continue. But it's because they found the secret to being content. Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in what He has done for you, knowing that He is in control. The last part of this chapter, or in the middle part of this Verse 19, Paul says this. This is a promise he writes back to them. And my God will meet all your needs according to his riches and glory. My God, your God, he will supply everything that you need according to his strength, according to his power, according to his resources, not yours not mine because you're guilty just like me we want I want God to supply my need but I need him to do it through my connections amen I need him to do it God I if you just use the people I already know if you just use if you just be just easier Lord if you just (laughs) if you just let me handle it you just kind of release the blessing and I'll just place it where it needs to go God promises he's going to supply every need. He's going to bless you when you need it. But it's going to be according to his plan and his purpose and his will and his strength, his love. You know what? I'm okay with that. There's been times in my life I wasn't. There's been times in my life where I didn't understand it and I wanted God to do it a different way. But I faced enough things in my life at 37 years old to realize that if God's not in it, it doesn't really matter anyway. Paul said, I've learned the secret to being content. That ability to put on blue and orange shoes, hot pink socks, black shorts, red and blue shirt, and a white, yellow, and purple hat doesn't matter that it's been on for three days he's okay with that he's cool with it Zach we're going to go to church okay going to go meet the president okay (laughs) he's cool with it he's content he has everything he needs because you know, you and I know to a kid, what they need are really, it's the it's the the bare necessities that a kid needs to feel that contentment. If, if mom's there, if dad's there, if they're in a recognizable place, they're at their home, their friends there, it, it, they're okay. Somebody they recognize, it's okay. See, what. Paul's talking about here that secret to contentment is getting back to what really just matters. That when you and I, when tragedy hits, not one person in here, you receive a phone call and say there's been an accident with your family. It's not one person that picks up the phone and calls their bank. Not a one of you picks up the phone and calls the bank to check the balance. Not a one of you run into your office and look at your degrees and say, let me get a picture of that. Nobody runs outside to admire the new truck or the new house. What does it go back to? It goes back to that. What really? I, I don't care if I have any of that. I don't care if I have what. I don't care if I don't have a car. I, I need my family. I need my kids. I need my wife. I need my husband. I need 
I need my family and I need my God. And if I can have those things, I can be content wherever. It's, it's going to be all right. The stock market can crash tomorrow. That's okay. One of the toughest times in my life that I had to go through before we came here, the only thing that kept me going was that my wife stayed, was just like, hey, we made this decision together. It's going to be all right. Yeah, but we don't, it's okay. It's going to be all right. God wants you and I to be prepared. We got to prepare ourselves when we pray, prepare ourselves when we deal with people. But it's finding that contentment and allowing the peace of God to be in control of your life to where it's okay. Regardless of what comes your way, but you learn the secret of being content. Rejoicing in the Lord. Honoring God for who He is and for what He's done. And knowing without a shadow of a doubt, it's going to be all right. It's going to be okay. God's in control, not me. God's in control. Everything's going to be all right. So throw on those hot pink socks. Just live life. Live a spirit-led life. Live a life knowing that God's guiding you and leading you. And I promise you, you can be okay with that. You'll be okay with the outcome as long as God's the one leading you. Amen. Bow your heads with me this morning.